Hey muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about elastic modulus. Basically, what is it? I get this question from my students a lot because at least at first it doesn't seem that intuitive. Well, it turns out it really is. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you what the textbook definition is and then we're going to move past that pretty quick. And I'll just show you physically what it is. It'll make sense after that, okay? So here we go. This is a curve you see in all the textbooks, as you should. Okay, it's called a stress-strain curve. And where stress-strain curve comes from, is you take a piece of steel or whatever your material is. I've got a steel rod down here. Take one of these and put it in one of these test machines. You grab both ends of it and you pull a lot. Right? When you do that, you can measure how far the jaws go apart. So you can measure its strain. Strain is just how much something stretches divided by its original length. And stress, which is force divided by area. Well, when you look at the curve that you get, for at least for a lot of materials, a lot of metals, all metals, I guess, it looks kind of like this. Now, this is, this is ductile failure if you're, you're tracking that kind of thing. And in this range over here, that line, oops, that's terrible. That line, I'll get my head out of your way here, hang on, is straight. It's very straight. Okay? The slope there is called E. That's the elastic modulus. Right? This is the slope of the stress strain curve while it's still straight. Over here, th this is what's called the elastic region. If I take my piece of steel here and I pull, but I only pull up to about there and I let go, it'll return to its original shape. That, that's what elastic means. If I go out here, pull hard enough, I'm, I'm going to permanently deform it, and that's called plastic deformation. So if you let go of the material, your test sample, and it goes back to its original shape, that was elastic deformation. If you pull it so hard that it's permanently deformed, that's plastic deformation. So that slope of that curve is elastic modulus. Eh, okay, I mean, that's correct without necessarily being helpful. Okay, let's try something else here. Imagine you have a beam, and maybe, let's see, it's like an I-beam. Okay. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Eh, look at that, you got it. Huh. Look at that, there's an I-beam for you and you put a big load on the end of it. Right? There's a construction site right there, just almost on the other side of my window. So I'm seeing beams and stuff all over the place here. And it's connected to something over here. This is, this is a clamped boundary condition, I guess. This beam, it's stiff, but it's not rigid. Okay? If you put a big enough load on it, it'll move noticeably. Well, the beam bends, it's got stiffness that comes from two different sources. One is the shape of the beam and one is the material. So the reason I-beams are, ma are made like they are is because when you move material out towards the top and the bottom of them, they get uh, stiffer. They get more able to resist load. They get stiffer and stronger. Um, so that's stiffness due to shape. But you can also change the material. So here's the... I've got three rods here. They're because I live in the United States, they're three feet long and they're a quarter inch in diameter. They're about a meter long and 6.35 millimeters in diameter if you want to use not silly English units. There are three of them and they're, the shapes are absolutely identical. They're as identical as I could get them, right? This one is made out of steel. This one's made out of aluminum. And this one is made out of a wood called poplar, right? It's a kind of hard wood. It's harder than than uh, pine, but not as hard as maple. It gets used for a lot of furniture and cabinetry and things. It's nice stuff. So, apart from their material, they are absolutely identical, as identical as I could get them. They're, they're cir circular rods, same length, same diameter. So, just to, you know, I'll just do it this way. Okay, here's the wooden rod. This is poplar wood, and it's super easy to bend. Okay, just with my fingertips, I can bend it very, very easily. Okay, this is not very rigid. It's very flexible. All right, let's change. Now, here's the aluminum rod. This one's a lot harder to bend. I'm having to push with my fingertips, and I'm having to really dig in. 
to get that bend there, to get that curvature there. Okay, so let's go to the aluminum rod. Sorry, this, let's go to the steel rod. This one, I can hardly bend at all. Um, that's hurting, hurting my fingers. I can't, I can't do that. So there's, that's all I can do. Go back to the poplar. No problem. Very flexible. And because they are all the same size, they are all the same shape, the only difference between the three of them is the stiffness of the material. So everything in the engineering world gets a number, and elastic modulus is no different. It's defined by the letter E, right? And we, E is for elastic, I guess. Here's elastic modulus for poplar. I'll write down that here in, in a second. Um, one thing to note is that in some old engineering books and some physics books, you'll see this as a Y. And the reason is it was originally called Young's modulus after some scientist or engineer named Young. Um, all modern references call that an E, and that's probably more, makes more sense. So the elastic modulus of poplar in metric units is about 8 gigapascals. Now I say about because all trees are different. The, the one on Matt Webb listed is 8 gigapascals. That's a big number. It's 8 billion pascals, and also it's pascals. Why is it in units of pressure? Well, it, it's in units of force over area because that's the units of stress, and then we're on the stress-strain curve. So this isn't really pressure, but it does have units that look like pressure. In uh, English units, it's about 1.2 million uh, PSI, and you usually see this written as KSI. Right, so it's again pounds, uh, 1.2 million pounds per square inch. So 8 million, big number, but it only makes it, uh, uh, only matters in comparison to the other materials. So let's take E of the aluminum, or aluminium, depending on where you are right now listening to this, and this is 70 gigapascals, much bigger number, and in English units, that's about 10 million uh, PSI or 10,000 KSI there. So much, much bigger number. Okay, well that explains it. That's why it's so much harder to bend that aluminum rod than it was to bend that wooden rod. And last one, let's go to steel. And that's 205 gigapascals, and that's about 30 million PSI. 30,000 KSI. So this explains it. This, this right here explains the difference in stiffness between these three rods. Remember? Wood, real, real easy to bend. Let's see if I can do this here again. Aluminum, much easier to bend. And steel, pretty dang hard to bend. Okay? with my hands there. I can just barely put a bend in it. It's hurting my fingers, so I'm going to stop. But that's elastic modulus. Now as you get farther into materials, you're going to find out this isn't always one number. If you have a material that's different depending on which direction you go, like wood or a composite or something like this, okay, called, uh, it has directional stiffnesses, there's more than one number describing elastic modulus. But for anything that's uniform, homogeneous, isotropic, and all that, it's just one number. So when you're taking your strength of materials class, this is the one you'll see. So I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.